How many of you are glad that you're here today? How many of you are really, really glad, very happy that you are here today? That you are happy, you're almost as happy as if it's your birthday. Because David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Who, who knows that uh, verse? Is a choir here? Okay, you, you might be on duty now. I might want to call your attention to, to this. Because there, someone even wrote a song about it. Say, I was glad when they said, let us go. They just said, you know what I mean? Somebody just said that Monday is bank holiday. And some people get excited. It's not Monday yet. They just said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And David was excited. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not sure you do. I used to have a very close friend. We worked together. His name is Roy. And Roy can be very miserable, Monday through to, to, to Friday. But the day that his football team is playing, right from Wednesday, you know that he's a different person. His football team has not won yet. They are just going to play. And everybody in the office realizes that his team is going to play. Because they said his team is going to play. His football team is going to play. That's just a football team. But this one is saying, they said, let us go to the house of the king of kings and the lord of lords. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I have a friend. He was teaching at a university in Mexico. And they said he has an invitation from the Queen of England to attend a function in London. They just said he was in Mexico. Do you know what happened to him? All soon about him changed. The people that were opening the doors for him changed. His flight, he had booked it for one day. And that day was after the event. He went to the airline and said, I want to change my flight because... I have an invitation from the Queen of England. Do you know what the airline did? They changed it without asking for the penalty charge. Do you understand? That is the Queen of England or the Queen of the United Kingdom. But you are going to meet the King of Kings. He was going to meet the Queen of the United Kingdom. And every door was open for him. Because they understand what authority is. Because they understand what power is. But you understand bigger than that. You know creation. So, if you are not excited about coming to the house of the Lord, it's because you thought you were going to a theater. Or because you thought you were going to have a Bible class. You know, if you are going for a Bible class, you know it's a different thing. Because you're going to a class where they teach the Bible. But what I'm trying to get you to understand today, that this is not a Bible class. No. This is a meeting with the King of Kings. And when you go for a royal event, those of you that follow me, how many of you follow me on, on, on Facebook? Good, you're allowed to go on now. You're allowed to open your, your phone. You know when people are speaking, they say, take your phones, switch it off. You know people normally say that? No, I say the exact opposite. I say, take your phone, switch it on, open your app, your favorite app. If it's your WhatsApp, open it now. If it's your Twitter, open your Twitter page now. If it's your Instagram, open your Instagram page. Open it now. Because you're going to hear some things today that you would like to hear again. So you type those ones down. You're going to hear some things again that you'd like your friend to hear. In which case, you tag your friend. You're going to hear some things today. If your husband is not here, you wish your husband was here. In which case, you tag him. If your sister is not here, you wish your sister was here. Therefore, tag her. I want everybody here to bring out your mobile phone. And the hashtag is Jesus in you or genius in you. I give you a hashtag. Hashtag Jesus in you and genius in you. And at the end of it, the person that twists the most will walk away with a present of at least 2,000 pounds. How, how does that feel? How does that feel? It's unusual. That's why that's I like um, 
my, my, my brother, the, the, the head of this institution. Things are done differently. Do you know why? No two fingers are the same. God does not like repetition. God loves variety. So that's why he makes some people tall and makes some people short. That's why he makes different types of people, different colors of eyes. If you look at butterflies, no two butterflies have the same pattern. Do you understand that? No two human beings have the same DNA. Even identical twins, they don't have the same molecular structure when you break it down. Because God made you special. Your school told you you were a number. At your workplace, they give you a number. It's called national insurance number. In the bank, they give you a number. It's your account number. At the GP's place, they give you a number. It's a national health number. But you are not a number. <laughs> you were created in the image of God and after his likeness. There is a uniqueness in you that somebody wants to dilute. You can work with them and dilute it, or you can work with your creator and manifest it. So today, have you, have you got my slides? With my slides already, you, you can put up my slides. I just want to give you some, some slides to, to, to look at. I know that you have a spirit and you have a mind. I mean, if you saw the leaflet for, for, for my, what I was sharing today, and your mind is supposed to be renewed. You see, the mind you have now is different from the mind you had five years ago. I'll prove it to you. Because the phone you have now is different from the phone you have five years ago. How many of you can say yes to that? Can, say, can you say yes to that? So the phone you have now is different than the phone of five years ago. Because the functionality of your phones today is a lot more than the ones you have five years ago. Now you have, you can, by the way, as you are here, you can switch on your, on your WhatsApp. You can have a WhatsApp seminar. As I'm here, you can put on your WhatsApp and click on the video icon on your WhatsApp and your husband at home will be seeing me right now. Some of you don't know that, but I know that we are on Twitter right now. We are on Periscope. I know that we are on Facebook Live and I know that we are on LinkedIn on video for people that couldn't physically come down here. It therefore tells you that your thinking five years ago was that thing was a mobile phone. But today is a broadcasting tool. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because 50 years ago, you needed to be CNN or BBC to be able to take images from here and at the same time show it to somebody that is not here. Is that true? You needed to be a rich person to have a camera that can take video, not just stills. Most cameras were just able to take photographs. They, we call the phone Nokia. Most of you, if we had this meeting five years ago, most of you will have Nokias. But today, there is not one human being here that has a Nokia. Do you know why? The mind of the technologists that designed those things have been renewed. They have moved into another phase of revelation. They are working in the knowledge of the book of revelation. Because they now tell you it is IT, information technology. <laughs> but it's not IT. IT is a nickname. Because in the book of Revelation, it says, the knowledge of the word of God will so increase that it will fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. If the knowledge will increase, you have to have a tool to hold on to that knowledge. And that tool is what some of you call Google. That tool is what some of you call Facebook. Because the knowledge that you share on Facebook is available to your friends in China. Is that true? How many of you put a photograph on Facebook before and your friend that is 60,000 miles away, 6,000 miles away, just click on it. How many of you have done that before? Say yes. Okay. It means you are awake. I just need you to be awake to the times that we are living in. You are awake physically. I need to wake you up that this generation is the greatest generation of all that's ever existed on the planet Earth. You know, Paul, when they put him in jail, he wrote epistles. When he was outside jail, he wrote letters of encouragement and wrote to, to Christians all over the world. 
but he didn't have Microsoft Word. If he had Microsoft Word, he would have written 10 times more than what he wrote. So when you start singing, these are the days of Elijah. You know there's a song we sing? These are the days of Elijah. No, Elijah is saying no. Don't talk about my days. My days are analog days. You have a better day. You don't talk about the days of Moses. Moses lived in an old covenant. You live in a brand new covenant with better tools, with better techniques, and with better technology. And therefore you have better thinking about what God can do. Because you can sit in your room. I've seen children, they sit in their room and they play video clips. And that video clip is watched by one million other people. And they call themselves YouTubers. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They call themselves YouTubers. And when I look at the message they are giving out, it's filth. When I hear the message they are giving out, there's nothing that gives lives. When I hear the message they are giving out, it is hollow. But I have the message of life. You have the message of life. But you forgot to put the message of life and deploy it because there are people dying today because they didn't hear you. There are people depressed today because they didn't hear you. There are people divorced today because they didn't hear you. You're not listening to what I'm saying. The way you have lived your life as a wife, if you share it with some women, they will not get involved in divorce. There are people diseased today because they've not, hear your, they've not heard your word of hope. So you are not just another human being. Do you understand? You were given a voice. If you use the voice, you will help people. If you ignore the voice, people will suffer. Who, who, who understands what I'm trying to say? So I came to town not to preach. I came to town not to teach. I came to town to demonstrate to you that the day you were born, the day you came out of your mother's womb, you were born great. I didn't say you are going to be great. That's an insult. Who, if anybody tells you you are going to be great, the person doesn't understand what you are saying. Because when Boeing made the plane, he didn't say the plane is going to be a plane. He made a plane and deployed the plane. And then the plane could fly. When Ford made a car, he didn't say the car is going to be a car. He made the car and when you took your key in the car, the car moved. I just came to town to tell you I'm the ignition key to your life. So, because without the ignition key, you see the car can't move. You can push it with all the force, it won't move. But when you get the key and put it in the ignition and turn it on, the power in that car becomes available for motion. So the power in your life needs to be available now for everybody to see and glorify. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Oh no, if you did, you'd be excited. Because the greatness in you, when you were delivered, when you came out of your mother's bed canal, scientists have done this. I'm not telling you what you read in the good book. No, scientists have demonstrated that every child that is born is born with one million million brain cells. Because they, do, they use what is called MRI. So you can image cells that are still alive. They use a technique to image the cells. They did it in California. And they give some people smoothies to drink and they image the cells of their brain to see which part of their brain lights up. And they give others juice to drink, not smoothie. And they wanted to see what part lights up. And they give other people squash to drink and they see what cells light up. And they give the people, other people, just the juice. They gave them the fruit itself and they squeezed the juice and wanted to see what part lights up. And they counted them Every human being born has one million, million cells. If you are tweeting, can you tweet that? The day you came to this earth, you had one million, million neurons or brain cells. And they tested one neuron. The scientific calculator was originally designed by Texas Instrument. Again, you can go and find this, you can Google this. And they took one neuron, they wanted to see what is the extent of one neuron. I'm trying to say that you were born gay. You were delivered great. <laughs> but you went to somewhere where they now tried to suppress the greatness and told you you were bad at maths. 
or you went to somewhere where they said you are bad at English or you are bad at French because when you hear began to suppress what greatness was delivered in you when they measured one cell one brain cell ladies and gentlemen they found out that one brain cell could calculate faster than the calculator one brain cell one brain cell one brain cell but they wanted to know the limit of one brain cell remember you have one million million of them. Mm, mm, mm. do you understand what I'm saying they now brought two calculators against one brain cell in addition one brain cell was faster in division one brain cell was faster <laughs> in all the four operations of mathematics one brain cell defeated two calculators so they said no no let's they brought ten calculators one brain cell versus 10 calculators, guess who won? Okay, they said, okay, better forget about calculators, let's get computers. They got a network of computers against one brain cell. Guess who won? One brain cell. One brain cell defeated a network of, of computers. Then they had a network of networks. They said, this is the first network 12 plus another network 12 against one, one brain cell. Guess who won? Guess who won? Okay, they now got the size of the computing power of NASA. Who knows NASA? NASA sends men and women to Mars. They send men and women to the moon. So the computer has to be very powerful. They got one human brain cell against the entire computational power of NASA, which is $3.6 trillion. That's how much they spend buying that NASA computer. How much? How much? How much? <laughs> One brain cell against that arsenal of power. Guess who won? So do you know why you were fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you know why? <laughs> You thought that was a poetic thing. It is not poetic. It is descriptive of who you are. One brain cell, one brain cell. So it is therefore idiotic for anybody to tell me that a child <coughs> cannot calculate enough to pass their GCSEs at the age of six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Most people write high school exam at the age of 16 and they may pass or they may fail or they may have to repeat. <laughs> Do you know why? Because their genius have been suppressed. <laughs> if your genius is expressed, you cannot begin to insult Ford and say that the car they made did not move. You cannot begin to insult Boeing by saying that the plane that they made, the plane that they manufactured, and they put a sticker okay on it and it came out of their factory cannot fly you cannot say that because it's boring that's what they do they do that every day they make planes and the plane flies how can how can you therefore insult me by saying my god made you and you and you cannot divide you cannot subtract at the age of six do you know who you are insulting the maker do you know who you are insulting? The creator. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you were born great. I know some of you are confused because you went to school and in high school you read Shakespeare and Shakespeare told you some are created great. Some achieve greatness. Others have greatness thrust upon them. Who knows that Shakespeare quote? Yeah. Most teachers believe it. <laughs> Most human beings believe it. I know that Shakespeare is fiction. You know what fiction is? It never happened. You know what fiction is? It's a lie. You know what fiction is? The Bible says, let every man be a liar. <laughs> Shakespeare admits is a lie. Some of you are not born great. Every one of you, every one of you, every one of you, every child you have, Every girl you have, every boy you have, every cousin you have, every niece you have was born great, period. Take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. 
And they say, oh, some of you in my family, we are not good at language. Who said that? They took the same brain cell and saved onto it the encyclopedic dictionary of English language. It went on it. They took French. They saved on it. It went on it. One brain cell. One brain cell. One brain cell. And then they saved Spanish. It went on it. One brain cell. Then they said Mandarin. It went on it. One brain cell. Then they said Cantonese. It went on it. One brain cell. One brain cell. One brain cell. When they got to the 15th language, they gave up. <laughs> you give up on God because his ways are past finding out. So every human being that is hearing my sound, the sound of my voice today, I don't care whether you're on Twitter. I don't care whether you're on Facebook. I don't care what platform you are. If you're on planet Earth and when you're hearing me, you can speak 15 different languages. Mm, mm. You were born. I, let me say it again. You were born <laughs> so that you can speak <laughs> 15 different languages. So that when you see the Mandarin person, you will say, Ni hao. So that when you see the Spanish person, you will say, Como se llamo? When you see the French, man, I am not telling you history. I am not telling you what happens in the days of Daniel. They said Daniel was tested. Daniel 120. He was found to be 10 times better than everybody in the class. Do you understand that? Those were the days of Daniel. Those were the dark days. Those were not the days that you have technology that can boom anything straight to the moon. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You are a multilingual human being. Do you understand? You are faster than the human calculator. Do you understand? So why are you afraid when they told you Brexit? Why are you afraid when they told you Brexit? How many of you have heard the whole kofofo about Brexit? Business is going bust because of Brexit. Because you haven't read the book of Genesis, chapter 21. You haven't read the book of Genesis, chapter 41. That's why you will be afraid. I was invited to the European Union recently. Those of you that follow me on Facebook will have seen that. And we had a discussion. And at the end, I just fell apart laughing. If you say you are afraid of Brexit, here is a simple formula for it. You speak another language. You speak German or speak French. Because you can learn German or French in five days from now. Five days. Five days. Any fool, any fool can learn a brand new language in five days. Any fool. Do you know why? He said, if a fool walks with the wise, what does it become? Oh, it's very easy. So if you can speak French or German, every product you are making in Britain is accessible to them. Do you understand? So the, the, the barrier is not geopolitical. The barrier is linguistic. If you convert your website that ends with a .co.uk, to a dot fr, it becomes French. If you convert it to a dot de, it becomes German. Amen. If you are still not sure, if you select all on your French on your on your English page and you hit it on Google French, what happens? What what does Google Translate do? What does it say? So what's the big problem? And then you change the sign for selling your water or your books or whatever you are selling, your product or services. You change it from the pound sign to the euro sign. What will happen to the Germans? They will buy from your page. So what is Brexit? <laughs> A great opportunity. A wonderful time <laughs> to flourish. Because Joseph told the king, hey, 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 King, don't worry about this dream you dreamt. There will be seven days. That translates to seven years. And those seven years will be seven years of plenty. Followed by seven years of 
what do you call inflation? What do you people will call today? What do your chancellor of the checker will say? <laughs> A time of recession. Amen. He said, here is the formula how to deal with recession. Here is the formula how to deal with uncertain economic circles. So when the economists try and educate me about boom and bust, they are talking to the wrong person. They want to tell me about the beer market and the bull market. Have you heard them say that? If you listen to the business news, this is what they tell you. And they give you the impression that it was started by the economists. Come on, come on. Find out what Joseph told the king. That's exactly what Joseph told the king. So why are you therefore panicking that the products you have cannot sell? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's pure and simple biblical economics. That's why I love the children of Isiaka. Do you, you know what the Bible says about the children of Isiaka? They knew the times. <laughs> Some of you are reading the times newspaper. Isiaka, the children knew the times. So they knew what time and what season was coming ahead. The times only report what happens. And those of you that are sophisticated read the financial times. <laughs> Maybe you have a better timer of times and season when Ecclesiastes was saying there's a time for everything. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Can you just advance my slide for me, please? So I hope you understand that when I say greatness resides in you, I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm trying to demonstrate scientifically. Can you advance the slide, please? I'm trying to demonstrate scientifically that it is true. And those of you that follow me on Facebook will have seen the, uh, our recent debate because they dragged me up to Parliament and they brought a gentleman called Jacob Rees-Mogg. Who knows Jacob Rees-Mogg? He's a, he's a lead leader of the ERG group. And, 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 and they wanted to see what my views were because in March 2016, before there was Brexit, I put a blog up on my LinkedIn page. And I wrote what I was told about Brexit. It was very unpopular, by the way. When you say some things, because you are working from a different dimension, you are treated as an unpopular person. But if you know who called you, you answer to your employer. If, if you know who created you, you live for your creator. Because you can change employers, you can't change creators. I left it there, a subject of ridicule. And on June the 24th, when it happened, they had to consult me. They laughed at you originally. But also, it's, you know, see the blog you put up? Please, can you tell us more about it? Can you expand on it? So they invited me into an English-speaking channel on television, and I spoke about it. And they invited me to another English-speaking channel, and I spoke about it. And they invited me to a Russian-speaking channel, and I spoke about it. And they invited me to an Arabic-speaking channel. Do we have the... If, if we had the slide, we'll have shown you. If not, you can follow me. Al-Arabia. Never heard of them before. They sent a Mercedes, a big car, to come and pick me up. To come and explain to them what Brexit is and how it will impact on businesses and how it will impact on institutions and how it will impact on different sectors of the economy. I said, but I am not an economist. <laughs> I am not an economist. There are people that are double PhDs in microeconomics and the macroeconomics. Here is their telephone number. They said, no, they didn't say anything about Brexit. We don't need their views. We need your views. I said, no, I'm very busy. They said, when will you be free, sir? They said, we, won't, we need you for the main news at seven. However, if you are unable to make seven, when will you be free? I said, but you see, when things happen, you question why. And God gave me a tap on the shoulder. I said, I sent you to be my voice to the nation. <laughs> what are you busy doing when I sent you on an errand to declare to them the true wisdom of God for now? 
There are some of you like that. You get very annoyed. You don't want to do the gift that God gave you. You don't want to use it again. You know, you are just like me. You know, like Joseph. We're doing the book, the book of Joseph. I was sharing that. If I was Joseph, I talked about dreams. My brothers hated me. I talked about dreams. My brother sold me into slavery. And then I got myself sold as an illegal immigrant in another country. The only sin Joseph committed was what? Talking about dreams. How many of you have been persecuted because you talked about your dream before? Can you wave? How many of you have been, you have something, God showed you something, you talked about it, and everybody started laughing at you. Did, can you wave? Huh. So you are in good company. I said, I won't, if I was Joseph in the prison, somebody is asking me he dreamt. <laughs> I said, no, please, just take your dream away. You see, I will have been with my brothers now. The only reason I came here is because I talked about dreams. So if you dreamt, please take your dream away. And therefore we lose the gift that God has given us in annoyance. How many of you are like that? I get annoyed sometimes. I get impatient with people sometimes. When I try and explain to them what is going to happen tomorrow and they don't get it, I get really, really annoyed. But Joseph, not Joseph, Joseph was calm. He said, you are the baker. You are the butler. This is what is going to happen and this is what is going to happen. He still said, he still manifested his gift when he was being persecuted. He manifested his gift when he was thrown in jail. He manifested his gift when it was sunny. He manifested his gift when it was what? Rainy. He manifested his gift when it was dark. And that's what God wants you to do. You know the story. And then it came to pass. And then the prisoner got to the palace. What happened? He forgot about Joseph. This is somebody that told him his gift, his, his, his future. He forgot about Joseph. What can be more annoying than that? He just left Joseph as a prisoner languishing in jail. He said, sort of oh, there's a prisoner that helped me when I was in jail. Let me help him. No. It was when the king dreamt. <laughs> it was when the king dreamt. And the king could not get an interpretation to what he dreamt about. Show your gift to little people so that when they meet big people, they will tell big people about your gift. <laughs> Show it to people that are nowhere so that sometime when they get somewhere, they go, the king said, King, oh, live forever. There was a boy I met in jail. This boy told me this, and he told me this, and he told me this, and it came to pass. Can you see? The man did not remember Joseph until he himself was in a big mess. People are in mess, they will call you. People are in mess with their marriage, they will call you. People in mess with their career, they will call you. People in mess with their ministry, they will call you. And please, don't get annoyed. Because the last person you helped betrayed you. It's human to get annoyed. Say, I'm not talking about this dream again. I talked about dream, my brother sold me. I told him about dream, they put me in jail. I talked about dream, even the person I helped in jail, he left and forgot me. And now, he's calling me. Tell the king I'm not coming. I'll die in jail. How many of you have had that type of feeling? Because that's a human feeling. God is saying, no, don't say that. Manifest your gift. Because a man's gift makes what? It creates way. The, the, the original Hebrew word. It creates way for you. That means there is no way here. Your gift will dig up a hole and you come out on the other side. Wow. And they brought Joseph. And Joseph told the king, and then he walked away. The king said, no, you can't go away. You can't go away. You can't go away. You can't go away. Because there's a king right now. Not in Israel. There's a king right now in Europe. There's a king right now called Angela Merkel. There's a king called Emmanuel Macron. There's a king in Downing Street. Mm. They don't know what the dream of Brexit is. If you're looking for Confused.com, look at the voting in the House of Commons. You will know that they have no clue what the dream is. <laughs> there is economic confusion in my day. And God said, I revealed my mind to you to say it, even when it sounds stupid. Just speak what you have in your mind. Especially if you didn't think about it. It is God's speaking to your generation and put it on your Twitter page and tag the Prime Minister 
and put it on your Facebook page and tag the Prime Minister. Any, anytime Angela Merkel is speaking in Germany, they tag me. I said, little me, who am I? <laughs> he said, no, you are a finger of God's hand. Have you heard it teaches your fingers to war? Have you heard that? There is more in you than the piece of paper you got from the university. You know you were given a piece of paper when you finished college? That piece of paper is somebody's opinion about you. Therefore, it is none of your business. Hey, let me say it clearly. Someone wrote an opinion about you to say you are bad at this subject and stamped it and put a date on it. And some of you head on to it at 16 and head up to it at 17 and you are still holding on to it and say, don't you know I'm bad at maths? Look at you. Who are you? I'm telling you, my teachers looked at my work and they say I'm bad at maths. Look at the piece of paper. I say, yes, show me the piece of paper. I want to see it. They don't know what I'm looking for. I look at the piece of paper and I see a date. I say, do you know what there's a date here? He said, yes, of course there's a date. I said, yes, that's my own answer to your question. That piece of paper was valid as at when it was dated. The next day, you could have turned up for another exam and wrote, in, and wrote the exam and got a different mark. Is that true? He said, yes. So you are working on expired information. It's going to pass itself by date. The person that made you told me to tell you that if you have a son here today, at the age of six, he understands enough of Newton's law. Your, your, your six year, I'm going to prove it to you. Your six year old understands the law of gravity. Do you know why? When you sit, when you get home tonight, sit on your dining table and put your son's favorite food there and see what will happen to that food. Right? Tomorrow, make another food. Your son's most hated food. And see what will happen. Because he will just take a little bit and start pushing the food to the edge of the table. Until, because your son knows that when the food gets to the edge of the table, it's not going to suspend in mid-air. He knows that. It's not going to fly up. Your son knows that. It's going to fly down. So that you can leave him alone. Because he doesn't want to eat at all if you are going to give him that food. But you say that food is best for his health. But he doesn't like the food. He's applying the principles of gravity to get rid of the food he doesn't want. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have a daughter, your daughter understands 14 principles of physics before she even went to school. Give your daughter the hula hoops, not like the round hula hoops, and tell them to play with it. Have you ever given them PowerPoint slides on how to use hula hoops? No. How did they know how to play with hula hoops? And suspend the hula hoop using centripetal forces. This is your six-year-old. It's not mine. Because the newspaper tells you, oh, my children, you, you saw that? They, they're the brainiest family on, on the planet Earth. CNN has looked at all the children that have written all the exams, and they say, mine is the brightest. If you picked up the Telegraph last Sunday, last Saturday, the Telegraph had a special feature on my family again last Saturday. And they were explaining to you how they passed this exam at the age of six, advanced level exam at the age of seven, Cambridge at the age of eight, and therefore this family is so unique, is so unique, is so unique. God just made this family. He gave all of them high IQ, and the next line he gave some IQ. By the time he got to where you were, he ran out of IQs. Because that's what the newspaper wants you to walk away thinking. That somehow you are inferior to us. When my Bible said, they that know their God, they that know their God, <laughs> they that know their creator, they shall be strong because of the knowledge of who their creator is. And because of that strength, they shall do exploits. So, you, you got that Daily Mail. Go and pick that up because I know you see the newspaper. You read the newspaper. Look at what Daily Mail was saying there. Did you read it? GCSE at the age of 10. Masters at the age of 17. MBE. At, so, so, they just look at you. So, oh, you see, I'm not worthy at all. I'm not worthy. Hey, no. 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 And that's why I came to town to tell you. When your son is born, the first thing your son should do is have neuro 
rewiring, playing that thing for them. You know music? Do you know music helps your logic? And music helps your memory? We were doing it then, we didn't know why we were doing it. When we had our little girl like this, we made our little girl to play music because we heard that they are worshippers. Every son and every daughter have plays at least two instruments and then uses their voice. I didn't know that if you want to build a built structure, you will have a strong foundation. And the foundation for all learning, please write this down, is music. Play one wind instrument and play one string instrument. I'm not saying you'll be as proficient as the best player. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about music as a therapeutic tool and as an educational tool. So when we play music and we worship him, he enables us. Who knows the story of Saul? When Saul had mental problem, what did they do to him? They got David to play music to him. And you heard them say that if you play for a musician, you can never go mad. Because it rewires your brain. But the school would say that music is extracurricular. So I told my children when they went to school, if there is a clash between your music class and your math class, please forsake your maths and go to music. Ah, the teacher said, don't say that. Mathematics is poor. I said, I know, it's poor. Only supplanted by the fact that you are going to do logic in maths. Are you not doing logic in maths? I said, yes. I said, do you know what helps your logical power? He said, no. I said, music. He said, oh, but they didn't teach us that in school. I said, I know. If they taught you that, you won't be a teacher. You won't use the tools of yesteryears. You're using the tools of tomorrow. So every single one of them have to have music. Okay, keep, advance the slide, please. Oh, so, so that's Anne-Marie. Can, can you go back? Go back. I'll give you a few case studies. Thank you. Now, I have the links here. We don't have Wi-Fi. Well, I played, oh, I don't have things. Our Wi-Fi is strong enough. Well, I played the, the links for you. And I want to give all of you here a gift to take home because you came to the house of God. Like I was saying, when we went for the royal wedding last year, when we were leaving, they gave every single person a bag of goodies. Just to remember that you once came to St. George's Chapel in Windsor for a royal wedding. So most people still have that up to now. A gift from Meghan then and Prince Harry. And they look at it, it reminds them of that day when they were in Windsor. Because they had to shut down the entire town. No car could come in. The entire Wi-Fi crashed because there were too many people in town wanting to be part of the ceremony. For coming here, I'm going to make available to you a free copy of the most successful autobiography ever. Last weekend, we had an American invasion. We had, is anybody able to play with uh, um, the slide for me, please? We had Will I Am on Saturday, and then we had Michelle Obama on Sunday, and then we had Nancy Pelosi on Monday. But before then, I don't know how many of you believe what he, the head of this institution teaches. Before then, there was a physical demonstration of the passage that says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He will stand before kings and not before mean men. Because when Michelle was writing her autobiography, I got wind of what was happening with her and the deal. But never in my life did I know that she treated her visit to London and I visit to one of our children's school so seriously. So in her book, in her autobiography, 
written by her, she testifies to what I just shared with you. Because most of you don't know this. She was born in the south side of Chicago. She was born where people don't even think of being small. They were below small. No, I'm telling you, you are great. But she was told she's too small. Because none of her parents went to school. Oh, no, her parents couldn't have gone to school because it was segregation, Hela. So nobody ever gave her a chance that she would make it anywhere. So when she visited London, she came down to Omotola. Some of you have heard me um, share this before. Um, there's a lady, Omotola Akerele. If you're a lady, if you're a girl, please write that down. You're going to Google it and find out whether the story is true. She was attending a school in Hackney. You know Hackney? Who knows Hackney? It's in the east end of London. Classified then as the poorest borough in the entire country. And therefore, children from schools there don't go anywhere except be laundry attendants or an assistant in a supermarket. And Otola came to meet me. I shared with you the principle I'm telling you now, the genius principle. I said, no, no, you can go to the best university in the world. Can you hear that? Somebody in Hackney going to a school when nobody from that school has ever been to Oxford and she's thinking of applying. I said, yeah, of course you can apply to Oxford. You made great. You were created great. You can achieve your greatness. And she went to meet her school <laughs> career advisor. And that one just laughed. <laughs> you used to be a good girl. You are now on something strong. You're on something strong. How dare you think from Hackney, Oxford will even look at your application. Do you know who is the prime minister? I say yes, Tony Blair. Do you know his eldest son applied to Oxford Modeling College and they turned him down? Do you know that? How many people have heard people tell you that? That your dream is too big for you? How many of you have heard people say, say that to you? Uh-huh. You either be tenacious or you give in. And the school said they will not even take her form and endorse it for Oxford. She came back to me and said, don't worry, leave, leave them alone. There's somebody in Oxford that is paid to reject forms that are not good. So let the person decide. I cut the long story short. Omotola applied to Oxford Modeling College specifically. And you see, she didn't just get in. She got a scholarship. She got a scholarship. I don't want you to believe it. It's in page 246 of the Michelle Obama book. When Michelle came to London with Barack Obama, then the greatest human being on the planet, the most powerful person on the planet, everybody was trying to take a selfie with them, take a photograph with them, ask them for an autograph. Do you know what happened? Michelle Obama came all the way to Oxford and who was taking her around? Omotola Akerele. That day is like Christmas to me. Christmas. This is the stone that the builders rejected. Have you ever suffered rejection? This is the same stone from Hackney. You don't understand. You have not been to Hackney. There are some places you go to in Hackney. You will say somebody is pointing a knife at you and you phone the police. The po police will say, give me your postcode. Give me. He said, what the hell are you doing there? The police won't go there. So when somebody from that postcode is now walking arm in arm with the most powerful woman on the planet, what do you expect me to do? I couldn't jump. I couldn't sing. I couldn't dance. I couldn't eat. My wife was, ah, but what's your problem? What's your own business? In it? You, you don't know. When you plant a seed of greatness, you don't expect it to be this high. And then one day it becomes an oak tree. You don't know what to do. How do you explain that to anybody? How do you explain that? And she was not asking for Michelle's photograph. Michelle Obama gave Omotola her personal telephone number and asked for her own number back. She brushed aside the protocol. She hugged. You know what it means to hug? A stranger. 
How can the first lady of the world's biggest nation start hugging children from the hip? <laughs> from the hip. Children that they said cannot amount to anything. Do you understand? You expect Michelle to be hobnobbing with the princess, the princess, the powerful and the rich. But she came down and she interacted with them. And she wrote a book. <laughs> and she put it inside the book. And she talked about her experience of coming to a mortal school. It just blows me away. I have no story to tell. I have no testimony to give. I give this as the evidence that you have that there's greatness in you. That's why tonight, I don't care who you are, I need you to get a copy of this. So next time somebody tells you that you are nobody and you amount to nobody, you say, by the way, there's evidence here in this book. This is not the Bible. This was not written in long time. This was not, no, they said, no, we don't know whether the Bible is correct or not. We don't know whether it's Hebrew or Greek. This is not Hebrew. This is not Greek. This is Michelle Obama talking to you. And then you can see it. So I'm not giving that to you because I just want to encourage you. I'm giving it to you that you take it home as evidence that every lie you've heard about your future, you must select all and hit delete. Every lie you've heard about your children's future, you must select all and hit delete. Every lie you heard about your husband's future, you must select all and hit delete. Every lie you heard about your wife's future, you must select all and hit delete and replace it with a new software that says you are great. Because every six months, they send you a new software on your phone. Is that true? That you must refresh now. Is that true? I came to town to take a new software on your mind. That you must renew your mind. <laughs> you must know that you are coming up to a higher ground. Because none of Michelle Obama's teachers ever thought, ever thought, she will get to Washington, let alone be in the White House. How can you be in the White House? A black girl in segregation America? No way. They never thought she would leave Chicago because her father, her mother, her uncle, they were all raised within five miles in Chicago. And they all were hoping to die within five miles of Chicago. But why sit we here and die? If we go to the city, we may die. If we stay here, we may die. Why sit we here and die? When there's greatness resident in us. The city is calling for you. I know that. There's a big vacancy. Because people want to know what tomorrow holds. And you sing here, I know he who holds tomorrow. <sighs> time is flying. I wish we had more time to download. You know when you start downloading files on the internet? It will say 5%. It says 3%. I've just finished my warm-up session. And the time is gone. I was just looking at the time. So, so those of you that can see, that's Michelle. Last, yeah, it was about a week ago. At the O2 Arena. Still hugging people. Still telling you that whatever anybody wrote about you, it's none of your business. What anybody said about you is none of your business. Because it's here in the Bible. That great things are written about you. Do, you. do you know that? Great things are written about you. You will manifest the greatness if you work with the principles. There's a footballer that most of you will know. His name is Fabrice. He played for Arsenal Junior. He played for England under 14, England under 15. He played for England under 21. But before this time, they brought him to me as a young man, as a 13 year old. They said, this is Fabrice. The parents told me he's very bad at school. So they were reading to me what the teacher said. He's bad in maths. He's bad in English. He's bad in science. He's bad in everything. All he talks about is football, football, football. He will fail and drop out of the school. And when you tell me that, you just don't, you've done my job for me. You say, all his good at. Come on. <laughs> I looked at the negative and push it aside and look at the positive. He said, all his good at is football. I said, don't worry. Are you good at football? He said, yes, good. 
This is somebody they brought to meet me so that I can help them with match. How many times have you been man of the match? He counted, oh, 14 times. And the parents are looking at me and say, oh, well, we brought him here, okay. Who is your best player? He said, Patrick Vieira, okay. Who is your favorite team? He said, Arsenal. Ah, I was, and the parents were getting irritated because they brought him here so that I can delete all those football from him. And now all I'm discussing with him is about football. I saw that. I said, okay, Fabrice, they say you are bad at English. Say yes. And the mom said yes. Anytime they give him essay to write in English, after writing two lines, he stops. I said, okay, Fabrice, please come and sit down here. Here's my pen. Write for me an essay on Patrick Vieira. And I took the parents to the next room so that I can tell them, so, don't worry, to reassure them. Before we came back, he's finished a whole page of A4. But I thought they said <laughs> English <laughs> is not his first language, which is true. They are from French. They are French speaking. So his French is good. His English is not good. I said, okay, who wrote this? He says, Fabrice. Did he use paragraph? Yes. Did he use punctuation? Yes. Did he use capital letter? Yes. So all the ingredients of writing was written in there. It's just that it's about Patrick Vieira. And the teacher is saying in school, he's bad at English because he doesn't write about Shakespeare. He does not connect with Shakespeare. I said, Fabrice, don't worry about that. We'll do something. By the way, there's a match on Saturday. He said, yes. He said, Arsenal is playing. I said, yes, I know that. If Arsenal plays on Saturday, what position would they be on the league table? Look at the question I'm asking him. Did you see the question I'm asking him? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm asking him a very deep mathematical question. Because then he was working, oh, provided my United draws, Arsenal will be on number four. But if mine just collapsed, this is somebody that is doing a lot of arithmetic in his brain. He didn't bring a pen. He didn't bring paper. He was using his brain to do the calculation, using his brain to store the calculation, using his brain to rearrange the clubs on the league table on the basis of the aggregates. And you are telling me this person is bad at math. I said, Fabrice, what you just did now is a lot of mathematics. He said, it's not math. <laughs> it's football. <laughs> You don't understand, this is football. Because if you win, you get three uh, points. If you lose, you get zero. If you draw, you get one point. Do you understand? He substituted X. Where X is equal to win, this is the point. He did it inside his brain. And you are trying to educate me or miseducate me that he's bad at maths. And because the mother heard it, the mother repeated it, the father repeated it, and he repeated it, and they became it. Have you heard them say, don't act like a fool? Because if you act like a fool, you become like a fool. <laughs> he said, in their eyes, we were like giants. In their eyes, we were ants. Did you read that in Bible? He said, we were like grasshoppers in the eyes of where? <laughs> when Moses said they go to go and spy. He said, in their eyes. How can you know in their eyes? How can you depend on another person's perception about yourself and project that as the gospel truth about yourself? So in Fabrice's eyes, he's a poor mathematician. I said, okay, that's fine. Now I have gotten the key. I went to the photocopier. I brought the work for the, his year. I said, Fabrice, can you do this math? He looked at me and said, ah, I tell you, my friend, we'll be discussing football. This math is very hard. It's for bright people. This math is for bright people. I can't do it. That's why they brought me here, all right? I'm bad at math. So okay. I went to the photocopier. The cover page. I photocopied the cover page of the one he says he's good at. The first page was the page I wanted him to do. The second page was the page from the paper he said he's good at. So I sandwiched the hard questions with the soft questions. And I stapled it and I gave it to him. He said, hey, this is the type I do. And he walked through that paper. That is when I knew that most of us have been wired with lies. When I marked that paper, the scale fell from my eyes. I was so annoyed with the devil. I was annoyed with the school report. Ron Colelli said, whose report do you believe? Hmm. Whose report do you believe? Whose report do you believe? The boy believed the report of the teachers. <laughs> Ron Colelli said, I will believe the report of the Lord. That's what Ron Colelli said. Pain me because the questions he did. Because I told him, attempt all questions. 
I don't care whether you get it right or wrong. I tend to all questions. So when he finished, I said, okay, this, you almost got this right. What happened? And he explained to me, and it was a small, small error. He explained, so his logic was higher than that of the school. I said, okay, I'm going to whip the school. I will whip the school with this boy. That year, I went back. I, I made the copy this time. I didn't change anything apart from the cover page. I changed the cover page to the page of the one that he wants to do, which is easy. The first cover says easy level one. Meanwhile, the content were difficult level six. And Fabi said, okay, yeah, I will try now, I will try harder. I didn't know I could get that. And he tried and he got 75% of it right. Oh, 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 oh. There's a liar on the loose. He's lying to you. He's lying to you. Fabrice wrote that paper. I said, okay, the best way for me to deal with this school is to enroll him to go and write the same exam as people that are two years higher than him. I don't want to tell them that he's the same level now. I we walk through her Fabrice. After nine months, he wrote the GCSE. Can you advance the slide for me? Let us see Fabrice. Uh, 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 can you advance it for, for me, please? He wrote the GCSE, ladies and gentlemen. He's on record. I want you to write this down. His name is Fabrice Muamba. Write this down. I want you to go and Google this thing. Because this is not a story. This is not a testimony. This is a verified truth that has been independently published by the Guardian. Published by the Times. He became the youngest person. That's Fabrice. He became the youngest person ever in the history of his school. Ken Scott School. Mark House Rose. E17. I know the postcode. I know where I saw the finger of greatness expressed. I know how his fellow classmates were told they are not good at math and they believe that lie and they dropped out of that school. And today, Fabrice has seen even the Holyfield. Fabrice has seen who? Piers Morgan. Can you see all the stars that have seen him? That is a little boy that the builders rejected. He is not related to me. I don't know him. I just know he's God. <laughs> I just know his maker. I don't need to know who you are. If I know who your maker is, I can work with you. You don't understand that. When we drive our car to the garage, <laughs> the mechanic hears the sound of the car and he tells you immediately that is a Volvo. He tells you that is a Ford. He tells you that's a Nissan. He hears the sound of your car and he can tell you who made your car. I heard the sound of greatness when I came in and I can tell you who made you. I know you were made in the image and likeness of the Almighty. Please don't let anybody believe you. Write his name down. All the boys here, I want you to write it down. Go and find out whether it's true that Fabrice played for England football. Go and find out that it's true that he passed the GCSE as the youngest person ever in the school. Go and find these things out so that you, I don't want you to believe it. Nay, 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 nay. I will tell you what to use your faith for. What you can't see. This is something you can see and research and very far. And know whether you want to walk like an ant or walk like a giant. If you walk like a giant, you act like a giant, you possess the land. If you walk like an ant, you beg to be noticed. You appeal and then you say, oh, do me this favor. How can they do you favor? You are doing them favor or turning up. Please, can you advance the slide, please? This is... No, just go back. That's a motor language. Did you see this? This is the University of Oxford official page. Is anybody here that has never been to, to this place before? A visitor coming here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? Okay, do you want to come forward and come and read this so that you know? You know. Yeah, please come and read it. You know what I'm talking about. Oxford University now published this comfort. They published the names the names of people that have finished from the university. Yes, sir, is that true? They publish the names. That's, that's I can't read that. Yeah. Okay. Top. Oxford. Oxford University. Okay. Can you see oh. that? That I is can't the official that. website of Oxford University. And Oxford University, they, they have students that have been through Oxford. And they include Nobel scientists. They include Olympic medalists. 
They include, they listed all the great people that Oxford has produced. Ah, ha, ah, sir, can you do me a favor? I want you to come forward. Tell me who is the first photograph there. These are Oxford showing of the great. Can you see that one? Can, can you magnify? The lady, the lady the, uh, yes. Did you hear that? Do I know you before? Thank you. Did you hear that? They said of all the students they've had, <laughs> of all the students they had in Oxford. <laughs> if I'm looking for a t-shirt that I will wear to my bed, a t-shirt I will wear when I die, put it on my coffin, a t-shirt that will take me anywhere in the world, I'll put on the t-shirt. He said, of all our great students, Omotola Akerele, a black little girl from Hackney. Then, do you know the next person? Adam Smith, the father of economics. <laughs> come and look, come and look, come and look, come and look. Indira Gandhi, the former prime minister of... Oh, go, come and look, come and look at them. Come and look at greatness. Christopher Wren, the father of architecture. So, so... Why am I saying I'm not, a I'm not a proud father? Why am I saying I'm not? So when Omotola was going to get married, she brought the then fiancé and said, you must come and meet my father. <laughs> he said, this man made all the difference in my life. I said, ah, I, I didn't make any difference. I only told you what you had that you didn't know. He said, no. He brought the fiancé for me to approve. <laughs> and the day of their engagement, she insisted that I be her father. Do you understand why if I treat your son as I treat my son, my son, your son, will treat me as you treat the father and will call you auntie, the mother, and will call the father uncle because he knows where his life turned around. Do you understand? And then when she gave birth to a boy, they called me as well for the christening. Do you understand what I'm saying? My relationship with you is not temporary. My relationship with you is eternal because you will accomplish your destiny. You will arrive at your destination. I'm not here to encourage you. No, 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 no. I'm here to unveil the genius that you have in you. I'm not here to try and cajole you. No, no. You should know, like you know your name, that you are great. You should know whether Joseph was in jail or in not in jail, the greatness was still resided in him. You should know when Nebuchadnezzar was having four and problem, they needed somebody to come and solve them. Kings don't have answers. You have the answer. Can you just advance? My, sorry, my time is gone. Like I was saying, we do, okay, that's Michelle Obama. That's Omotola Akarele. Can you see her photograph there? <laughs> this is BBC. This one was used by CNN. See, what I'm trying to tell you is not a secret thing. The external press, the skeptical press, the quest that always argues with you, they argue with your philosophy. They argue with your principles, but they cannot argue with your products. They display it. They give a testimony. That's it there. That's it there. Please, can you advance this slide for me? Because... I don't have time. Can you see the great and the good? They're taking photograph with her. That photograph is not Photoshop. Look at it. It's Getty Images. Type Omotola's name and type Getty Images. The big photographic agency that takes photographs of the good and the great. They, uh, that photograph came from them. This is somebody from Hackney. And some of you think your postcode defines you. Say, oh, you don't know us. We are Irish. You don't know us. We are Welsh. Oh, you don't know my village. Hey, your village does not define you. Your tribe does not define you. Your height does not define you. It's your maker that defines you. And that's the script I'm reading to you. Can you advance the slide? Let's, let's just run through. We'll see. That's uh, ben, Sir Ben Ainsley. Six-time Olympic winner. Can you, can you see that? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Please advance the slide. Just speed through. That, that's Chim Emela. Wait, this is Chim Emela. Chim Emela, does that sound German? She memela, does that sound German? She applied the genius principles. She wrote the German exam ahead of her time. She's called, the German teacher called her and said, you want to write German, you will fail. You will fail. German is very hard, it's very difficult, it's very structured, you will fail. Do you know what happened? She came to meet me and said, it's God that made you multilingual. 
God did not make you one language, many languages. I said, how many languages does God speak? Um, every language. <laughs> if you are the son of God, do you speak like your father? I say, yes. Are you a child of God? I say, yes. If you are a child of God, therefore you must speak every language God speaks. She was laughing. <laughs> she didn't get the revelation. I said, we'll play some videos and some cartoons. And she walked through that. Without doing the syllabus for, for German, she wrote the German GCSE. She have not started. She's too young to start the syllabus. She wrote the German GCSE. 2005, she wrote the German GCSE. I was just praying that she should get a C because the teacher wrote that she would get a U. Because everybody in that school that writes German, only 36 pass with a C or higher. And she has not started. Of course, she will fail. The day the result came out, ladies and gentlemen, she didn't get a C. She didn't get a C. She didn't get a B. She didn't get an A. You know what she got? She got an A star. She's still alive. She's coming for, uh, we have a, a, a boot camp next weekend in Cambridge. She'll be there. She'll talk to the girls. Because it changed her life around. Tony Blair invited her to number 10 down the street as gifted and talented. What happened to the German teacher that said she couldn't pass? <laughs> you think I'll pick up a fight with them? No. Don't fight with ignorance. Don't fight with ignorance. She was given a scholarship, 48,000 pounds, by St. Michael in Fishley. Google it, St. Michael. St. Michael is the school that Tony Blair's only daughter applied to. And St. Michael wrote back to 10, 10 Downing Street. Dear sir, we regret to inform you that your daughter did not meet the requirement to go to St. Michael. That's what they wrote to Tony Blair. That the daughter was not bright enough. The same school wrote a letter to T. Memela. Are you listening to me? To say, we are pleased to inform you. <laughs> we are pleased to inform you. The letters you have been getting from rejection. You apply for mortgage, they say you can't. You are going to reapply because they are going to be pleased to inform you. Your bank account, you are looking at this report. They are going to be pleased to inform you. Every single death, because this is resurrection day. Every single death that you've received. Every single negative report that you've received. Today is your day of resurrection. She is now, I cut a long story. Of course, she went on and wrote the Cambridge exam. Chime Mela is now a senior vice president with Barclays Bank. She just finished a sting in Wall Street. She was working with UBS. This is a little girl that they brought to me. This is the phone that they rejected. <laughs> so, when they now get to their place of work, they tell them about me. <laughs> and say, oh, you have not met Professor Christie does that. So when you see me appear in some places, you think I applied for the position. No. My children, biological. My children, intellectual. My children, academic. My children, they're all over the place, in big places, because greatness works in them. Are you listening to me? That's why I came to town. To recruit you as the next list of people that will change your thinking, change your tools, change your techniques, and dominate your niche. I want to close. Can you just fast forward? Let's talk about Nick quickly. Oh, that's Joshua. He finished from Queen Mary at the age of 17. Oh, no, back, back. This is Nick. That photograph on the left, we took it inside Buckingham Palace. All the princes were there. There was a reception. Nick had spoke to, spoken to me because he heard what we were doing. He said, would you like to be my mentor? I said, what? He said, oh, I, heard, I heard that. I said, okay, no, don't, don't worry. He said, it's, it's math. No, it's not worry. Math is all, all about logic. It's not about numbers. If you understand that, you go far. It's all about logic. I cut a long story. You see the, the, the tag there? Can you see the link there? I want to be able to send that to you. I need to get all your emails. I'll send that to you. Go and watch it. Nick, at the age of 17, Use the mathematical logic to write one app. That app summarizes web pages. That app sold to Yahoo for $30 million. I want you to see the link. I don't want to believe what I'm saying. 17-year-old. Some people live their lives and they don't walk up to one million. 17-year-old. Ask parents for their pocket money. But this boy, the parents ask him <laughs> for pocket money because the parents don't earn anywhere near what is earning. 
I pray that my children be greater than me. I pray that my students be greater than me. Because Solomon was greater than David. So when I say there is greatness resident in you, I'm not just saying academically. I'm not saying in terms of sports. I'm not saying in terms of entrepreneur. Any field that you choose, whatever your hand find to do, you do it as unto the Lord. And therefore, the prosperity follows you. It follows you. You don't pursue it. Say, I want to work hard for experience. No. There is excellence in you. They say you have an excellent spirit. You express the excellence. You express it. So, time is run out. Like I said, uh, uh, the boot camp, if you're free, if you can make it, fine. If you can't, follow us on, on social media and we'll make this available to you. And you've heard about Huawei. How many of you use Huawei phone? Here, yeah, Huawei phone. Good. I will tell you the miracle of Huawei and how Huawei came about. There's a book here. We'll make it available to you. This is the Huawei book. The story of Huawei and how multi, multi national companies are set up. And if you want to dominate your niche, there's another one here. Again, I'm giving all of this for people. And I've, we've got some uh, magazines here. I had my son just pass the 11 plus. Where is he? The one that is going to Royal, Royal, Royal um, Latin. Can you put your hands together for me? Put your hands together. So I'm, I'm going to give this to you as a, as a prize to tell you that a laborer is worthy of his reward. And your brother, did your brother help you? Did your brother help you? Did he mark your work while you were doing so we'll, get, we'll try and get him something as well. What phone does he have? iPhone SE. So we'll, we'll have a, a, a tag on iPhone SE that can sit on it, hang around a special tab on that. So take this and God bless you. So I want to thank you for listening. And those of you that are online, you can uh, continue the discussion. And those of you here, we're going to make sure that we'll establish this in every sphere of your life. Because today is your day of rising above all the bad Fridays you've had, the good Fridays you have, the sad Fridays you have, the dead Fridays you've had, you have a new Sunday and a new resurrection. God bless you.